Okay, so now uh, uh, Ivers uh, showed this copy of the book uh, Symmetry and Chaos. Uh, let me try to show you that even with much more complicated dynamics, patterns appear, and that they have some um, relation to things that you see in the physical world. So uh, here, this mapping F is going to be a mapping of the plane to the plane. I'm going, it's a rule which says if you take a point in the plane, it tells you where to take that point. Okay, I could write down a formula for some such mapping, but you get the idea. Just every point in the plane goes by to another point in the plane. Uh, now, suppose I choose a point C0 and I apply F to it. I get another point, which I'll call Z1. And I take Z1, apply F to it, I get another point Z2. And this way, I get what mathematicians would call a dynamical system. Points just move around the plane in sequence. And uh, we started saying, well, what happens if this F has some symmetry? What would you expect to see? Uh, the first thing uh, is that there are this notion of attractors. That is, uh, you iterate the mapping, that's what we're doing here, apply it F lots of times, on a computer, do a thousand iterates, throw them away, and then plot the next million iterates. And what you see is what's called an attractor. Uh, now there's something that's going on here that I didn't describe. This, is col this has colors. So let me use the second set of uh, numbers to tell you what the colors mean. So uh, Mike uh, Field called this the emperor's cloak. Uh, what, you, what we did here is iterate for 251 million iterates and count the number of times each pixel on the screen is hit during this iteration process and color by number. So this two pixels having the same color on the screen is saying that the probability that you'll land in those pixels during the iteration process is the same. So the colors, the different colors, are indicating different probabilities. Now, if you look down here, there's white, and next to it, dark blue. Well, white is hit just one or two times during the iteration process. Dark blue is hit 600 times. So there's an incredible structure to what's going on here. That is, that this picture is reproducible. I'll guarantee you this is chaotic dynamics, and I'll try to explain why in a, in a few minutes. And you've probably heard of the butterfly effect. If anybody has heard about chaos, they've heard of the butterfly effect. Um, I mean, my own feeling is that it's nonsense. But let me try to explain why I uh, think that it's nonsense. Is it a true mathematical statement? Yes. It's the interpretation of the mathematical statement that I, uh, that I don't like. It is true that if a butterfly flaps its wings outside the carriage house, it will snow tomorrow in Beijing uh, quite unexpectedly, that, that that's a possible outcome. But it's not really likely that it's going to make that kind of a change. The average of expectations is something which is reproducible. And that's what these pictures are saying, is that the average, the, times the, that you hit a given point is really something which is a reproducible effect. Um, I, I promised to show you that there was, that these were chaos, uh, chaotic dynamics. Uh, chaotic dynamics is, the, the basic definition is what's called sensitive dependence on initial conditions. And that's really what the butterfly effect is supposed to be. That is, if you take two points that are nearby, after a while they're uncorrelated. Well, I can give you, using this uh, three-fold symmetric picture, a way of seeing that this is going to be the case. So it has three-fold symmetry. Here are the three lines of symmetry. You have these six wedges, which I will color uh, blue, green, uh, red, magenta, and so on. And now, on this side, take a point over here and ask where it goes on one iterate of the map that produced this picture of gold pencil. It'll go over to this red wedge. Over here, this point will go to the green wedge. This point will go to the blue wedge. And you can start to see from this schematic how the mapping is mixing up points in the plane. Well, this is just one iterate. Remember, we did 250 million, that, sort of, that kind of thing. So after three iterates, points over here uh, go to magenta, 
points here, green, blue, you can start to see that points that are relatively near are going to different wedges. Well, after nine iterations, uh, it's really starting to get mixed up, but just after 29, uh, this is really uh, impressively mixed. Uh, and now you imagine just doing this millions and millions of times. So uh, this shows that there is indeed sensitive dependence on initial traditions. Uh, just a, a few more Rorschach tests uh, for your amusement. Uh, we, this is our chaotic flower, uh, St. John's wort, which, uh, if you look it up, cured an incredible number of things in 15th century England. Uh, <laughs> We tried to get Mercedes interested, but um, another three folds in that chair. Now, you can do the same thing with uh, uh, array, uh, period using periodic boundary conditions. Uh, you can make quilts. Uh, so this is the same kind of deal on a hexagon where it's periodic boundaries. And you really have to wonder where, how the mathematics is coming up with these kinds of pictures. Remember, equal, same color, equal probability of visitation. Uh, my favorite is this one, which certainly looks like a, a mosaic that one could uh, create. I mean, just in some 